I was telling everybody I knew for sure you were going to grapple this and you might even submit them. That, that was a, a fait accompli in my mind. Did, did you have that in your mind too, figuring it was going to be a grappling match? Uh, no, I didn't know for sure that he's going to be a grappling match, but uh, I have that as an option that he could, he could be a, a grappling match. Basically, uh, because I wasn't very comfortable on my uh, stand, I wasn't very stable, so I was very concerned and couldn't move properly and against a guy who moved as well as uh, Syria, you know, so he was pretty tough for me, uh, st uh, stand the stand-up part, but um, he kind of like gave me the opportunity, you know, uh, came to me at first with those takedown and I know that that's what he's been working on and my team uh, con uh, uh, recommend me to like keep doing that, you know, work on the uh, uh, grapple, wrestling and grapple, grappling, because we were pretty confident about our uh, skills. Francis, when you're going into a fight of this magnitude, you know, you're fighting another undefeated champion, why would you go through with a fight if your leg was bad, right? I mean, you know, how much consideration did you give to pulling out, given the fact that there's a lot of significance, and if you lose this fight, people are going to say, oh, yeah, it's just an excuse, him talking about his leg. So, you know, wouldn't it have been in your best interest to say, hey, I'm not healthy, and come back and fight a different time? Well, um, people will always say something, you know. Uh, and uh, leading up to, to this fight, uh, I get injured. <coughs> You don't, you don't know what's happened, you know. I could have withdraw uh, to this fight, but uh, then get in another fight, get even worse. You know, we are doing a sport that is very dangerous. You can hurt yourself all the time. So if you feel like there is a chance that you can do it, I think you have to do it. Uh, and I believe uh, in myself, you know, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life. So I was sure, I mean, that, that must be a uh, dumb decision, but we didn't want to withdraw from this fight. I was very confident about uh, my skills to win this fight. I noticed uh, Mick Maynard uh, put the belt on you and not Dana. Was that at your request? You didn't want Dana to do that? Or what, what, why, why did that happen? I don't know. You have to ask him. <laughs> so, so you did not have anything that no, you didn't no, say, I, I don't do want to. I do not have anything to do about that. Okay. I think that was their decision. I'm about to ask about that, too. Okay. Um, and I guess that leads, you know, Dana doesn't come to the press conference. It makes the inference that it's something to do with you, right? So is, um, does he it make you want to the press conference? He wasn't here, no. He wasn't ah, here. Okay. What? I didn't know that, too. Does it make you wonder what your future is in the company, given that? Well, it's been a long time that I've been uh, wondering about my future in the company, so... Nothing has changed. I'm still in the same position. Ron, one other question. What is the biggest issue from your standpoint? Is it simply money or is it the no, other way, the no, way you're no, treated? No, no, it's not simply money. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, money is a part of it, but it's also the term of the contract that uh, I don't agree with it. You know, I don't feel like uh, it's fair. I don't feel like I'm free. Uh, I'm a free man. I don't feel like... Um, yeah, I don't feel like I'm, I have been treated good. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, I have to be in this position uh, to be able to do that, to say that. But I think it's something that everybody should at least have a right to claim uh, for what's best for him, you know, because at the end of the day, we put a lot of work in this job. We uh, uh, give, um, take a lot in our body to make it happen. So uh, at least we can have a, a fair and square deal. Francis, will you go to the UFC or are you going to just wait for them to come to you? Well, I've been going to the UFC a lot, so I kind of like exhaust all my options. If I, if I understand right, if you don't fight until December this year, your contract will be over and you'll be a free agent next year in January? No, uh, I think so. So is it, are you comfortable with the decision that you might just not fight for a year now? In the past three years, I have fought three times. So what did that mean? Once a year. So it wouldn't be something very, something strange. But is that not some frustrating to you, you know, because you're an athlete who's... I'm not frustrated about anything, my friend. I'm in peace with myself and my decisions. So do you believe it's boxing next, no matter what, even if the UFC come to you with a contract? I don't believe in anything. I don't know yet. Congratulations. You're welcome. Francis, right over here. Okay. To your right.
Hi. Good. Uh, congratulations on the victory. I do want to ask, were Thank there you. any words finally exchanged with Fernand and everything after the fact in the cage or after? No, no with Fernand, with Siri. And what, what did you say to him? Obviously, you've been in his shoes before to experience that first loss too. Yeah, I've been there, but uh, I know that he has a skill. I know that he's a big guy, a uh, good guy. He's a good fighter. That just uh, means to be uh, between crossfire, you know, they're trying to use him um, to, um, they're just trying to use him, you know, but he's a good guy and I have nothing against him. I think people wonder, you know, Francis, you know, with the power, how is Francis going to feel if the fight goes later? How is Francis going to feel if he can't knock him out? Can you tell us just how did you feel? Those later rounds, you have to do some <coughs> stuff that we haven't seen you do before. Just what was going through your mind in those later rounds? Well, actually, for the first uh, two rounds, I was to, uh, I couldn't find my spot, couldn't move properly, and uh, was little concerned, uh, basically, by the end of the second round. And then uh, something came to my mind. I remember all the support that I'd been receiving from my uh, country. Uh, and I'm like, I'm not letting them down, you know. And... Uh, then my coach, uh, my coaches that were there, like uh, motivating me, telling me like it's good, this, that, you know. Then we went to the third round and then uh, get this take down. And at the end of the third round, I kind of like see uh, see him desperate, you know. At that moment, I know that he's gonna lose this fight. Like he's losing the fight. He, he I could tell that he wasn't his, himself anymore. I don't have to tell you this. We don't often see you fight for this long at any time. How long has your wrestling neither, been a part of your game? Neither do I. I don't. I haven't seen me fight for so long. <laughs> well, the wrestling be part of my game. I think uh, since the beginning. You know, I've been working on. Maybe he wasn't good enough, but I never had a chance to like uh, prove it. Um, and uh, in the past. Three, three years, you know, uh, we've been, I've been at Extreme Couture, been working on uh, uh, wrestling, you know, is a elite wrestling uh, team, and um, I have the opportunity to have great partner and great coaches there who are very good at wrestling, and I show up to every class, you know, uh, wrestle, with every, well, wrestle with everybody. My final question, um, obviously there's going to be a lot of talk, what can, you know, one promotion offer, what can UFC offer and everything, at the end of the day, can I ask you simply, do you feel like you still want to be a UFC fighter? Well, it's been a long time and a lot of things been, uh, been going on. So uh, at this point, um, I think my feeling doesn't matter. You know, uh, I've been feeling a lot of things uh, in the past year. I've been uh, expressed my willingness to stay in the UFC, uh, to have a contract. Uh, just to be respected. And the only reason why we are here, I think, is because at, at some point uh, I wasn't respected, you know. Um, he could have taken way less to, to uh, get this deal done, but he went to like a power position and get kind of like get everybody frustrated, get me frustrated, get me lost, lost the uh, feeling, the uh, desire of doing things, you know. Uh, I get in this sport, I, w I wasn't, I didn't grow up dreaming about this sport. I just get into it because it was fun and all those stuff. Then you get to the point that you've kind of like find another side of the sport, which is not funny, which is frustrating. It's kind of like mess with your mind, you know, so, but I'm pretty good trying to like uh, uh, stay focused, just think about the sport and nothing around it and hope that things going to go away. Congratulations. Thank Francis, you. right here in front of you. Quick one. How hurt were your knees? What exactly happened? <laughs> it was pretty bad. Uh, I have a, uh, I had a grade three um, MCL. I have a damaged uh, ACL and a uh, <coughs> damaged um, MPFL. And that was uh, 25 days ago. Uh, one, one last one. Uh, outside of your wrestling, and I think in the, one of the later rounds, you actually swept him. You were on the bottom, and you swept him and, and got top position. So how actually, that leg, that leg was hurting because I was trying to hold his, uh, to hold his leg with my right leg, and that, that was the leg that was hurting. But 
still manage, you know, trying to use uh, body position uh, and to, to get there. Do you need surgery at all? I think so. Francis, over here to your left. How you doing, mate? Um, when you're fighting a fighter like Cyril Ghan, um, does winning a decision mean a little bit more than simply just knocking him out? Uh, well, if I would have chose, he would have been a knockout man. <laughs> 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 this five round, it wasn't my call. Yeah. But mean, uh, meanwhile, it was a good thing because uh, I finally had a, a chance to prove um, to prove that I can do it. You know, everyone counts me out when it goes to five rounds. I'm like, ah, oh, Siri by decision. If Francis win, is by knockout. But you were wrong. Have you had a chance to talk to your mother yet? I'm just wondering how proud she is. Uh, I couldn't talk to her because they were just celebrating, shouting, <laughs> yelling. Couldn't hear anything. And the signal was very bad here. I was in medical and stuff, uh, but I called. Awesome. Congratulations again. Thank you. Fra Francis, how, how, uh, how hurt were your, were your knees when you were fighting? Was there any point during the fight where you felt like you may not be able to continue with the knees? No, that I might not be able to continue, but I was like very uh, stable, like trying to like hold position, don't move too much. I didn't want to <coughs> sleep or something. Uh, just the idea of like sleeping or getting kicked on that knee was so... Um, uh, scary. Basically, like I saw the doctor uh, on Tuesday to clear me, and he wasn't very optimistic about it, but I still decided to move on. What kind of advice did the doctor and your team give you leading up to it regarding the injury? Well, my team was by my side, uh, regardless of whatever I decided to do, uh, that's what they said. But. Uh, the doctor said he wouldn't recommend me uh, that because I can have a, uh, irreversible uh, damage. That was he say, yes, irreversible, something like that. If I get kicked on that knee, so that's why like I couldn't switch my stand. How, how does your knee feel? Et, finalement, on s'habitue, et après euh, le premier spectacle, le premier événement avec les spectateurs, on a tout autant peur parce qu'on ne sait pas comment on va réagir avec la foule, si ça va nous distraire ou pas. Mais dans l'ensemble, ça s'est bien passé, surtout à la fin avec la victoire. C'est aussi beau de voir un, un public et de célébrer avec. Maintenant, pour ce qui concerne euh, euh, le Cameroun, la Coupe d'Afrique, euh, oui, je pense que c'est une motivation. Euh, euh, ils ont été une motivation pour moi, pour ma victoire, et je pense que d'un autre côté, je serai une... Euh, ça, ça peut également contribuer à une motivation pour notre équipe qui déjà, à mon avis, n'a pas besoin de cette motivation parce que je pense qu'ils ont les choses sous contrôle. Et euh, surtout avec euh, un nouveau président de la fédération qui est Samuel Etofis et qui, voilà, pour, pour son arrivée, tout le monde est un peu galvanisé et très optimiste pour remporter cette Coupe d'Afrique des Nations. Francis Francis. Encore un petit mot en français. Félicitations encore pour, pour ce combat. Merci. Euh, est-ce qu'à un moment donné, euh, vous vous êtes retrouvé un petit peu dos au mur après les deux premiers rounds qui n'étaient pas forcément en votre faveur et vous avez surpris beaucoup de monde avec, euh, avec votre sol et votre lutte et qui, est, qui a construit votre victoire euh, Ça a surpris beaucoup de monde. Est-ce que vous en avez conscience, ça euh, non, le but était juste de gagner et de faire tout euh, pour gagner, surtout que euh, les deux premiers rounds, euh, je me suis un peu euh, fié à, mon, à ma boxe et je n'étais pas très stable, je n'étais pas très confortable et surtout face à un adversaire comme Cyril qui est très agile, très mobile et très bon euh, euh, en pied point, euh, c'était très difficile pour moi de gérer. Euh, mais bon, on a donc... Euh, Mon équipe a décidé euh, qu'on adopte une autre option puisque c'était euh, une, op puisque euh, une option qu'on avait en beau choix. Vous aviez annoncé que vous alliez le mettre KO au deuxième round. Ouais. Finalement, vous gagnez la décision au cinquième. La victoire est belle ou il y a une petite pointe de déception de ne pas l'avoir mis KO La victoire, c'est la victoire parce que bon, c'est vrai que je ne l'ai pas mis KO, mais en même temps, j'ai un peu déçu des gens qui espéraient que j'allais perdre si j'allais à la décision. Je les ai prouvé le contraire. Est-ce qu'il y a une forme de revanche, justement Parce que bon, il y a votre histoire de contrat avec l'UFC. 
bah, chez les bookmakers, vous n'étiez pas forcément le favori. Et finalement, bah, c'est quand même vous qui restez le boss. Est-ce que c'est une forme de revanche ce soir euh, Je vais dire que c'est un... Comment on dit statement en, anglais, en français euh... Oui, c'est un message au fait euh, que j'ai renvoyé. Euh, J'étais le champion, je suis le champion et je reste le champion. Indépendant, indépendamment de tout ce qu'on raconte, euh, au final, le boss, c'est moi et je l'ai prouvé ce soir. Et une dernière question, on a parlé avec Cyril euh, il y a quelques instants. Euh, il rêverait d'une un, revenge, d'un nouveau combat, mais cette fois à Paris. Est-ce que vous seriez prêt Est-ce que c'est quelque chose aussi qui vous plairait d'avoir un, une revanche, mais cette fois en France avec un public qui attend ça aussi. Mais est-ce que vous, vous l'attendriez euh, Ça, il y a beaucoup d'improbabilités dans ça. Déjà, il faut savoir quelle est ma situation ici à l'UFC pour commencer. Et ensuite, quelle est euh, la, la situation des choses avec le Covid. Parce que l'UFC, euh, parce que euh, avec le Covid, apparemment, les choses euh, ne sont pas très faciles. Raison pour laquelle euh, les événements de l'UFC et voire même d'autres sports euh, sont un peu concentrés dans certains états qui sont les rares états qui sont encore qui sont euh, accessibles. Mais une revanche contre Cyril Gann à Paris, vous signez ou pas Oui, bien sûr. Euh, il est inévitable que il est clair, clair que si, si, on a, si je reste là, euh, à un moment donné, je vais rencontrer Cyril, vu son talent. Je sais qu'il va rester au top de la catégorie et à un certain moment, il aura sa revanche. Merci beaucoup. Francis. Francis, <coughs> Francis uh, you know, you mentioned the support that you receive from your country, and, but at the same time, it seems like Fernand and, and France sort of painted this narrative of you being ungrateful to an entire nation of France, that narrative has already played in. How happy are you to put this all behind you because it seems so far from the truth? Yeah, man, that's crazy. It's, you know, as you say, it's the narrative and you can't control the narrative. I'm not a media, I'm just a guy, you know, go who, uh, who is out there doing, your, do, doing his thing. And um, I feel very relieved now But uh, even though the narrative were wrong, um, they kind of like, that belongs to the past because those people who knows me know that I'm not ungrateful. Uh, and my fan, my friends, my family in France, they are still there, they, they know me. And um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that I had in France, but uh, st I'm still a Cameroonian. As long as I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have in the U.S., you know, every every step uh, along the way, uh, you have stuff, but you move on. That doesn't mean you you uh, that doesn't take away anything from uh, what from the gratefulness that you have for something. I have to leave my country that I was born there uh, uh, after 27 years. That doesn't mean I'm ungrateful from my country. I love my country, but I have to move on with my life. That's how it is, you know. I have to live, we all have to leave our parents' house. That doesn't mean we don't love them. We love them, but that's the process of life. We have to move on. That's just how it is. It's not being ungrateful. And it's even when you move, uh, when you leave sometime, that we, you really realize the love that you have there. You appreciate it even better. But you have to do that. You can't go back because that's how it is. You know, that's just life. And I think people just wanted to manipulate this, use this get in my mind or like trying to like um, uh, tear my reputation or something. But at the end of the day, man, I make it all the way here. And uh, I think I have some sort of angel guidance who will still be there and protect me. <laughs> Francis, over here to your far right, Colin <coughs> Crandall, MMA Power Hour. Normally, when you win the decision, you're not having to wait for the judges. There's no question about that you won. Were you nervous? No. when? You did. You, no, you, I don't. You, you were very confident you would yep. win. Yeah. Okay. What fight would be more exciting to you if the money was right? An MMA fight with John Jones or a boxing match with Tyson Fury? If the contract was right. If the contract was right the in both of those situations, which is more exciting for you? I don't know, man. I was so pumped up for the John Jones fight the last time. And uh, since that was a promise uh, before the fight that the winner between Stipe and I are going to fight John Jones, but. Uh, since I uh, I won that fight, I never heard about it, you know. So 
at this point, I don't really know what's possible. I don't know what is off the table. So kind of like lay down and see. Makes sense. Last question for me. Um, would you feel that John Jones perhaps would be the second best fighter in the heavyweight division in the UFC, or is it Cyril Gunn? I don't know the position on Joe, John Jones right now. But is their uh, skill? If I could ask about their skill, who is the better, maybe, do you think? Uh, I think skill-wise, John Jones is by far the, the best. You know, I think uh, he's really good. And, uh, yeah. And Cyril may be number three or something, right? Skill-wise, MMA-wise, striking-wise, because uh, overall-wise. Overall, what do you think in the heavyweights? You, Jones, Cyril, maybe? Well, you put in Stipe. Oh, Stipe, is he may? <laughs> is Stipe third above Cyril? Uh, okay, if I have to put. If you have to put. I mean, the, the if I have to put. <laughs> skill wise? Skill wise. I'm not for p the pound for pound guy, so don't c don't ask me. Heavyweight, I don't know. Heavyweight, heavyweight. Can you put heavyweight skill wise top four? Uh, I don't know. Don't ask me that question. No man. problem. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations, my friend. You're welcome. Francis, last one right here, to your left, right, huh? right in front. Okay. Um, I just am curious, how proud do you leave here tonight of yourself? I mean, you've probably had more spectacular victories in terms of the knockouts, but you bet on yourself with the contract stuff. You came in injured. You lost the first two rounds and came back to win. Is this, like, one of the proudest moments in terms of you getting this victory tonight? Uh, regardless of what happened tonight, I was proud of myself, my friend. I came from a long way, and I made my way here, which is something that uh, – I'm very pr uh, proud about that. And uh, as I said before, like, doesn't matter uh, how this fight play out, I will still be proud of myself because I know that I never give up. I never uh, a step back. I always give everything that I get. And it could have end up different way. That would have taken anything from uh, what I have done on from my accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's go, guys.